What's going on, YouTube? What's going on, NFL World Raiders fans? Bro, the Raiders pick up the W, the game-winning field goal, and the final seconds in Cleveland, 16-14 victory. People still didn't see that coming, despite the fact that they had Nick Mullins at quarterback. Yeah, wow. they did not. They, they, there's a lot of hype for Mullins, but uh, that turned out to be nothing burger. It's still a close game, though. Still, still very close. close. But hey. But we had uh, Peyton Barber, five carries for 34 yards. Longest run was 19 yards. Pretty impressive. That was interesting, man. So we, the Raiders have lost Drake, and you thought, dang, who's going to fill the void? And then you flash back and remember Peyton Barber in the Miami game when Drake was banged up, when freaking Jacobs yeah. was banged up. Peyton Barber looked good, and he looked good today. 19 yards on one carry. The long yeah. led the team. And when you think about it, why not get this guy more involved? You see them not be scared to dump him off some receptions too. So yeah. I'm wondering, can he be something like a Devontae Booker for us? That guy looks great. Booker looked great last year. In 2020, yeah. right? He's a giant now, but I'm liking Peyton Barber. I'm liking Pey Peyton Barber, too. Uh, Jacobs, of course, was still still showing up. He had 15 carries, 52 yards, but Barber ultimately had a higher average. So, right. Jacobs yeah. is, is sitting there with 52 yards, and we can just go ahead and try to take a look at some of this, too. Uh, 52 yards, 3.5 average for Jacobs. Meanwhile, you have Barber getting that 6.8. That's what you'd like to see. It was pretty scary, though, in the first quarter. I remember that Derek Carr was leading in rushing in the first quarter with one yard. <laughs> with one yard. Yeah. Yeah. So, you don't want to see that. Yeah, you don't want to see that. But, hey, we got the dub, and that's what matters. Yep. Uh, Zay Jones, uh, six receptions, 67 yards. Hey, and Zay Jones, I love that they put him in the presser because this guy yeah. was the player of the game. He's wearing I mean, Browns colors, but... It's like Carhartt. I am a sucker for that neon orange. <laughs> I, I am a sucker for that cool. neon it orange. Cool. Yeah, it yeah. Cool. That construction no. gear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a sucker for that. So I feel it. Um, and then Crosby was saying that on the Raiders channel. Remember, he said he likes to wear gear that's related to the home team, oh, whether yeah, it be a yeah. basketball Especially jersey. An away game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. psychologically, maybe Zay Jones does that too. But I would say, dude. Like if there if there's such thing as a comeback player of the game, usually a comeback player of the year. This guy was a comeback player of the Redeemed game. Redeemed himself in only a few minutes there. I yeah. know. There, at one moment, we're on our live. We're cussing out Zay Jones. We're Wait. upset. We're saying you're just a depth piece. You're not a number one receiver. I hate to admit it, but it's we true. said that you know because we were frustrated. <laughs> and right? then immediately comes back and shows us what's Shuts up. Us Shuts us up. up. But I love to see it. I love but to I want to see him keep it yeah. going, dude. You got yeah. three games left for yeah. sure. You you were you were promised three games in the NFL. Let's yeah. see how 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 much further we can go. Sixty seven yards. That's great. Eleven that's great. per catch average. Yeah. That's awesome. And clutch catches, just like the Ravens game, getting the game winners. A Jones did that, yeah. and this time he did it yet again. And then Derek Carr in the press conference saying that he, you know he has confidence moment. in this crucial guy. Crucial moment. Yeah. Derek Carr's pick. I mean, Zay Jones, that did not look great. And it was a tough catch to make, but was if you want... triple coverage, too? That long bomb? I don't but Carr know. threw him open, and he had a shot. But he was open. He had a shot. A okay. Yeah. So uh, Moreau stepping up in the absence of Waller. Um, he had a couple drops, but he had seven receptions, 65 yards. So good yeah, game overall. It, and the problem with Moreau in the Chiefs game and he, is he was just absent. Like, you just didn't see any receptions, not even targets, so you wondered if he was even getting open. And obviously the fumble yeah. was just like a dagger. Yeah. And even Derek's fumble today, Brian Edwards' fumble today, if you want to beat a team like the Colts, if you want yeah. to even maybe even beat Broncos or the Browns when they're fully healthy, right. you can't have that stuff happen. So yeah. it was very improbable for us to win these this game because of those turnovers. But I will say, Foster Moreau, seven catches, 65 yards, like you're saying, looking good after I had initially been like, whoa, pump the brakes on Foster. Yeah. We need Waller. Yeah. I think we still need Waller. Like, well, obviously, yeah. If we get Waller back with how gelled this team, with how many reps some of these other receivers have, have received, people like Deshaun Jackson, Zay Jones, Brian Edwards, and Moreau, yeah. obviously Waller's fully matriculated with this team. So you bring him back for these next three games that we have to win. This is a fire offense right now, right? But yeah. – Problem today, though, and I will say, and here's my main criticism, it's just still not enough points, man. 16 points against the Browns. I know they're pretty much fully yeah. healthy on defense aside for a few safeties who had the COVID positive test, but... Third string QB. Yeah. So, so. But Nick Mullins is not a joke, you know? I would say, though, overall, what, like, the offense was very efficient. Drive killers, things that I saw happen. Fumbled by Brian Edwards. Fumbled by Derek Carr. And third and three, and Derek Carr slings it to Deshaun Jackson. 
yeah, you expect a PI call because you're getting tugged, but yeah. let's just try to not sling it all the time on third and three. But we adjusted, realized that the refs weren't going to call the flag. Yeah. Uh, Abram showed up also. Nine tackles, two tackles for a loss. Good on him. Yeah, Abram. Yeah. He really was looking sh- a little shot psychologically last game. We made a video about this, somewhat of an, uh, a notorious or infamous video at this Maybe point. Maybe we're overly um, critical, but I still don't regret it. I still I, I don't regret it. it. I think I think we were right to make it. I think a lot of other people were thinking and feeling what we saw, what we were thinking and feeling. That being said, Abram showed up this game. I'm happy for him. Uh, proud of fire. him. He had fire. He had passion. He showed up, so that's what we like to see. Rich Bisaccia had a fire today. Yeah, Rich Bisaccia, like, he like, was yelling on the sidelines. Like, he right. looked the most pumped up I've ever seen him, yeah. and I was like, okay, let's go. Like, I want you to succeed. Like, I, I have made fun of Rich Bisaccia before. You guys have probably seen, like, my face swap video. Yeah. If you haven't, check it out on my shorts. But, like, I've made fun of Rich Bisaccia, but whenever I make fun of someone, it's because I want to see them succeed. Yeah. You know, and and I think he did that today, and I was it was, it was tight to see him, like, pumped up. Yeah. See him get angry at the refs. Yeah. We've been waiting for that, and it happened. Yeah, and you know, I was worried about this game. I was hoping this was going to be a game where we got our mojo back after this just absolute humiliating slaughter the week before. Uh, and then, of course, the NFL decided to change the COVID rules in the middle of the se- I mean, really near the end of the season for people who aren't playoff bound. Uh, it, you know, it just it came out of the blue. I guess they weren't prepared for an outbreak among vaccinated players, so they just you know changed everything like overnight. <laughs> Um, move the ge- f- uh, push the game, even though last year when our O-line was on the COVID list, they moved it up on us, 10, 12 hours. So they pushed this one back. People are stranded in Cleveland. I guess people didn't play hooky, though, Sunday night. I guess people stayed inside and uh, were disciplined and got some sleep, got some water. And it was good. Yeah, it was it great. It was very good. I think our team showed up. Again, it was a little too close for my comfort, but I'm very proud of our team today. I'm happy that uh, I'm happy we got this dub. And, you know, it, it was looking pretty bleak there for a little bit. Right. Uh, and I think we'll leave on this note. By the way, Derek Carr, 25-38, 236 yards, yep. one TD, one pick. Yeah. Uh, Nick Mullins, not even gracing 100. 150 no. yards, 147. Yeah. But I, I will say this, and I want to leave on this COVID note, and the fact that the NFL made it easier for you to come back after testing positive for COVID. And I think it's very unfair because you can't switch the rules week 15 into the season. Yeah, how Teams many agreed that. Yeah. Teams agreed, and they had their practice squad, their COVID practice squad. They had their rosters loaded in a particular way because they were worried about these, this COVID situation where you have to have two negative tests after testing positive, yeah. even if you're vaccinated and they have to each be 24 hours apart. That was the original rule. They changed it. So it's only one test. They changed it. So it's only one test. Maybe the Raiders don't keep three quarterbacks on the roster. In that case, there are certain decisions that teams made because of the COVID policy and to switch it randomly towards the end of the year, I think is wrong. I absolutely agree. Uh, Mike Florio has talked about uh, different incidents this season that have compromised the integrity of the season. I think this is absolutely one of them. Um, I I just think it's unacceptable that people who had to deal with players who are out because of the old testing rules, and then they look at this and they laugh. What what else can you do but laugh? I mean, it's just unfair. It's unfair. And and to be honest, like I'm not even being biased for the Raiders because we really haven't had a situation where key players have been out due to COVID besides Nate Hobbs today against the Browns. But under the new policy, he wouldn't have been able to come back anyways. We've really only had Richard and a long snapper miss a game. But I'm just talking about for the whole NFL. I just think this is messed up yeah. because other people have, have been screwed over. And hopefully we, we, we get more fair games in the future and we don't have rules change randomly towards the end of the you year. You thought the, mo- the more lax testing rules also would enable someone like Jadavion Clowney to come back, maybe even Baker Mayfield, but they still were not in it. So right, Yeah, so we yeah. got lucky, though. So we got lucky there. Uh, but yeah. sh- shout out to you guys. Hey, i um, going to say like this video if you watched it all the way through. We just wanted to give some thoughts in addition to our earlier live stream. Yeah. And also remember to subscribe to this channel. We're going to keep releasing content all the time. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Yeah. And we hope you have a good day. We'll see you on the next one. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Audrey Stone. Peace pe- out, guys. Peace out.